What's popping? How you living? How you breathing? How you vibing? Welcome to the Culture Climate on the Sister Speak Show Network. On the Culture Climate, we're checking the temperature in the culture's climate. Who am I? I'm Sister Speak. Who are you? A wonderful listening audience. The Sister Speak Show Network, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana. But you better call me Sister Speak. (laughs) The Sister Speak Show Network is rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. First and last Warning, welcome to my faithful listening audience and welcome to my first time listeners. I thank you so much for choosing to allow yourself to be led (laughs) to the Sister Speech Show Network. We thank you for allowing us to be the flavor in your ear. Thank you for adding us to your podcast shuffle. It is 10.55 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm recording in Dallas, Texas. The temperature is a cool, about 92 degrees. <sighs> Had a little rain. Loving it. To my first time listeners, check this in. You're going to need two things when you are listening to the Sister Speech Show Network. You're going to need to be hydrated. You're going to have to love water. You're going to need to have water in your life consistently in order for you to be able to combat the wiles of the devil. It is an element that is vital, that is necessary for your body. I don't care about anything else. All I care about is water. You need it. If you're dehydrated, you can be annihilated. And we don't want that to happen. Number two, scuba gear, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. We dive to leagues in the sea. You are going to need scuba gear. There's no way that anybody can physically go into any part of the ocean into any league of the sea any depth of the ocean without having scuba gear and we have conversations that are controversial we have conversations that may be taboo and subject matter we don't do any reckless entertainment but we have these conversations where you know when you were in school (laughs) you had to put on your thinking cap When you're listening to any episode, any segment on the Sister Speech Show Network, you're going to need scuba gear and you're going to need water. Okay? Vital, vital, vital. So let's get into it. Just a quick, you know, note, mental note. I want you all to know that there was a part on the last episode that I recorded about the high-end fashion crimes where I was talking and my microphone was off but there is definitely more content just you know slowly fast forward and when you hear my voice rewind just a little bit so you can get to the cue where I started talking again okay thank you in advance number two I'm another year younger I'm very grateful that I was created I'm very grateful that the Lord kept me I'm very grateful to be alive. I am very grateful to have endured and survived. And it's only up from here. Anything going down is crashing. So I'm really grateful that I'm breathing. Very grateful. And I'm grateful that you're breathing too. You know, the Sister Speak show is going to continue to gain momentum. Uh, We will be outside. There's a time and a place for everything. And we're coming outside sooner than you think. (laughs) When you have people that are, you know, don't want to see you do well, but they don't realize that they're footstools, you just have to keep some things quiet. Okay? Quiet to avoid the riot. Mm. So let's get into this. Just a quick background for my, you know, listening audience, for my first time listeners. I'm a believer. I am a believer in the Most High God and His Son. Jesus the Christ, Yahweh Shai. I am for the village. I'm about solutions for the pollutions, panaceas for the uh, afflictions, the spiritual afflictions, 
picking up litter, putting it in the garbage can. I am pro all shades of brown people. Make no mistakes about it. This is not a podcast for the nation. Podcast, <clears throat> excuse me, for the nation. This is a podcast network for all shades of brown people. The twelve tribes of Israel. If you're not in that, this is not for you. This is a podcast network that's on the front line. A lot of energy that is needed to be on the front line for our brothers and sisters. When you have decided not to sell out, when you have decided not to be reckless with your gifts, with your talent, when you have decided to stay in the village and be for the village, it requires a lot of energy. The process is a little bit longer, but your faith is stronger. The content is stronger. The substance is strong. The substance is stronger. The process of actually letting the Lord have his way and have his hand on your life will sustain you and will sustain your gifts and your talents. You can be grow impatient sometime because you want to get there. You know you're supposed to be there, but there are some parts of your journey that require whatever it is. Maybe it's just a little longer stay in that class. In order for you to gain the wisdom that you need to gain the momentum and be able to sustain the enlargement of the territory, okay? The Sister Speak Show Network loves our people. That's it. And you will know that about me when you peruse and select more episodes to download. The culture climate was created to specifically speak about what goes on in our village. You know, there are panels, there are workshops, there are other people that are on the front line because they care about all shades of brown people. The beauty of having a podcast, the beauty of being able to say what I want, when I want, how I want under the assignment of the Most High God is the fact that we can really speak about what's going on. You can say it like it really needs to be said. Oh, you're going to find out. Holding back no punches. There are some punches that need to be released into the village because our people are in peril. We do perish for lack of knowledge. We do shun knowledge. And not we, but some of us do do that. And we are out of sync. The algorithm in the village is off. And the culture climate is specifically for addressing why is the algorithm off? Why are we off? What is it about this specific topic that has us, you know, bound in a stronghold, struggling, hindering us from being able to make it, uh, hindering us from being able to fellowship with one another, love our neighbors? What is it in this battle? It's about, you know, recognizing that spiritual warfare is real, that witchcraft voodoo and that evil eye magic is real, spell is real. And that when you are selected, chosen, when you have a gift and assignment, when you are a truth teller, a whistleblower, when you're a divine teacher, when you are bold in your speech for the people, and when you are just literally in the marvelous light, you will be attacked. But it is necessary to still speak about it. A lot of people have a microphone, but, you know, there's only a select few that really have something to speak about consistently, content that is worthy of diving into. And the culture climate is like a spiritual encyclopedia. It is like a, um, it is a way to, to change your perspective and for you to be entertained, but not recklessly, okay? To be educated. I can hold a show and you will hear news clips that are for fair use, you know, under the Copyright Act of 1976 to only raise awareness, to only educate, to hone in and to hit home about what it is that we're speaking about. It is an audio curriculum that is guaranteed that is imperative to 
navigate us into where we need to be as far as freeing ourselves from the fuckery. Oh yeah, our people can engage in some into some fuckery. Tonight's episode on the culture climate, raising, excuse me, checking the temperature in our culture's climate, the tenants' nightmare. When tenants' rights are violated. Also, creating and living in filth. <laughs> We're going to get into it. This is a subject matter that we can all, those who have lived in an apartment, those who have lived in a townhouse, those who have lived in a duplex, you can relate. And our people in the village live with live in villages that are not up to par that are subject to many cold violations that are making our brothers and sisters sick that are leaving our brothers and sisters who are already up against it financially having to endure the cold violations the nonchalantness of the property management, of the landlord, of the owner, of the maintenance workers, having to a DIY their way through a building that is that should be condemned, that has not been upgraded, no weatherization, nothing being done to create an atmosphere of living that is conducive to living in an upright way. We're going to get into it. What is making the owner, property management, the landlord neglect these buildings? Why are there infestations? Why are there so many violations and what's going on with the work orders? We're going to get into it because when these codes are never fixed, it's only a matter of time before several things can happen. No one who pays their rent should have to endure negligence, a shrug of the shoulder, have to reach out to several different support groups to get help, cry out to the news, post on social media for help, set up a GoFundMe, call the Red Cross, do what they have to do because they're in a nightmare. They're in the tenant's It's a tenant's nightmare. We're going to talk about this on the culture climate. Checking the temperature in the culture's climate. Where? On the Sister Speak Show Network. Who? (laughs) Sister Speak, that's who I am. The time is 7 minutes after 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. Dallas, Texas. You dig? You feel me? You hold on. I know you are. We about to get into it. We're going to take a couple commercial breaks. Well, not a couple, a few. And then we're going to go ahead and get into these clips. We're going to talk about it. You need to understand if you are living in an apartment building, you have rights. You need to know your rights. You need to be educated. You cannot sit here and drag your feet pop your gum and just complain about something when you will have the ability to read and succeed. We're going to get into it on the Sister Speed Show Network, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Shout out to all the people who have started listening to the Sister Speed Show. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Your listener support means a lot to me. We'll be right back after these commercial breaks. So 
glass of water. You can take the heat, so go ahead and stay in the kitchen. Just make sure you keep listening to the Sister Speak show while you do it, because you're listening to the culture climate, raising the temperature and controversial conversations, rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. You are currently listening to The Tenant's Nightmare, Violating Tenant's Rights, The Dangers of Creating and Living in Filth on the Culture Climate, Checking the Temperature in the Culture's Climate on the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. Rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. Some women think they're stepping in the name of love when they're actually stepping in the name of danger. Meeting a man who says all the right things, doing all the right things, masquerading as an angel of light, wanting access into the home, ready to be a father figure to your children because you're vulnerable, you're weak, you're desperate. He's charming. He's good at what he does. His past, you don't care about that because you're ready for your Mr. Right, even though he is Mr. Wrong. And things got different when he moved inside of the house. And he's not leaving anytime soon. Next on the suspense files, the step boyfriend father. Rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. There is a phenomenon taking over the East Coast, the West Coast, the Dirty South, and everywhere else. Some consider it to be a culture a way of life, a part of hip hop. However, lawmakers, law enforcement, and some residents are up in arms about how to crack down on this culture. Next on the tour, where we cover every aspect of the music industry on the Sister Speak show. When calamity takes the wheel, street takeovers and street racing in the USA. Who's producing the soundtrack for this culture? You made up in your mind that once you got to Hollywood, nothing was going to stop you. You were going to be famous and you were going to get a star on the Walk of Fame. You were willing to do whatever it takes to get your record deal, even if it means exploiting your God-given talents, even if it means hanging out late night with the who's who. Some people don't even have talent, but they're willing to do whatever it takes to get on. And many find out with the D and record deal really stands for next on the tour surviving the producer's proposition did you know that the sister speak show is a syndicated podcast on amazon alexa and sonos tell a friend also let them know that the show is rated r for strong language thoughts and ideas thank you for downloading each episode on demand Welcome back to the culture climate, checking the temperature in our culture's climate. This is the speak show for all shades of brown people. Let's get into it. You need a place to stay. Okay. And so if you've ever lived in an apartment, you know where we're going with this. You looked all around for the place to stay. You had to fill out the application. You had to pay, pay a security deposit. You had to come up with sometimes the first month and last month's rent. You had to get a moving truck. You had to get the boxes. It's a process. It's an all-day event, having to move. Moving into an apartment complex, you know, grateful that you got approved for the application. You know, prayed about it, got into it, and you're here. And, you know... There should be benefits, amenities that come with living in an apartment building, you know, access to the maintenance. There's just certain upkeep that you don't have to do outside of just having to put in a service request because that service request is going to get whatever's wrong in the apartment fixed. That's if they're on top of their job. You know, you're not looking for your refrigerator to go out, your washing machine to go out, your dryer. None of your appliances, don't let the AC go out. 
oh my, you're not looking for any of these things to, to, to fall out, to become loose, <laughs> but they do. And you're expecting it to be fixed within a decent turnaround rate. You're expecting everything to go to go smoothly. And if they can't fix it, you're expecting for it to be replaced, not refurbished, but replaced. And if there's anything electrical going on that is affecting the units, well, then you're expecting, once again, the powers that be in control of that complex to get on it, to fix it, and then to provide adequate stay, compensation for you and your family and or your family if you are not going to be able to live in the comp in the apartment because this thing that is happening is not making it conducive for you to stay you know if the owners are the owners then there has to be some form of money that they have outside of covid hitting i do understand that there are a lot of landlords that you know took a hit but that still you know, does not mean that things have to fall by the wayside, especially if it leads to death, sickness, you know, with mold, infestations, and things of the sort. That needs to be taken care of immediately. There's no, we'll get to it in 90 days, uh, we'll see about it, spray a little of this on it. Um, none of that quick fix DIY stuff, no. This is a violation. I'm a tenant. I have rights. And a lot of times, some people just don't read the entire leasing agreement and they don't know their rights as a tenant. And it isn't until some bull stuff pops off that it's like, or some stuff breaks loose in the apartment where it's like, all hell breaks loose. The landlord... The property management, the owner, sad to say, some of them are hoping that you do not know your rights because it gives them more wiggle room to let stuff fall by the wayside. It also exposes their character. The word slumlord comes into play and there are slumlords in every single state. There are those who have taken on the venture, the quote-unquote career of becoming a landlord and have found it to be lucrative and have complexes or a complex and they're just in it for the money. They're taking Section 8, they're taking Section 10, Section 25, and it is what it is. And there is such a demand for you to have your rent on the first, no later than the third, that they'll put you out if you don't have your stuff together within this contractual agreement time frame. But when it comes to you, it is what it is. Maybe uh, you may even experience retaliation as a result of you acting in your rights. We're going to get into it. There were a lot of people, before we get into these clips, whose rights were violated during COVID. If you entered into a, the rent relief program in any state and you had a contractual agreement with your landlord and they agreed to enter into the rent relief program and they still decided to, you know, act outside of what they agreed to, your rights very well could have been violated. If there was a judge that agreed with any eviction process that took place during the rent relief program when you were waiting for your approval or you got approved, your rights were violated, especially if you signed the CDC moratorium, especially after what uh, President Joe Biden signed into law covering you during COVID, there were a lot of violations that took place. You, some of you, have dealt with a nasty leasing agent. Uh, uh, the, 
you would like to conduct business in an upright position in a high vibration, but they trying you down here. The, the, the manager is with the shit. The manager is disrespectful. The manager is, is rude and you're having trouble communicating on that tier. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was brought to my attention. Let me get me some agua. Looks like we might be diving a little deeper. The, excuse me. Well, not excuse me, but y'all, you know. Anyway, the manager is the bottom tier. Know that always. You know, you have to take it to a higher level. <clears throat> And, excuse me, a lot of times people don't want to deal with the paperwork. They don't want to deal with all of what comes into it because they don't want to be retaliated against. But once again, your rights are being violated if you're being retaliated against. You need to know what things come with being discriminated against. They're counting on you not to read and not to know. You know, there are tenants associations, apartment associations that you can join that can protect you and your rights. You can't be lazy when it comes to spiritual warfare. You can't be lazy when it comes to your well-being and your welfare. Yeah, you may have dropped the ball. There are sometimes yeah, there are people that have been evicted, but there are some people who have been unlawfully evicted. There are some people who, who have dotted their I's and crossed their T's, but they've been met with a force of resistance when it comes to the apartment complex. Placing a call because you have no AC in the middle of a 108 degree heat spree, having to blow, f f turn on fans and open up windows and do all these things to try to beat the heat is a violation of your right as a tenant. It is a nightmare when the AC goes out anywhere. In the car, anywhere, but we're speak, we're, we're going to stick to the specifics of the tenant's nightmare when stuff stops working. And they're placing calls, but because of the location, because of the status of the tenant, there may be some prejudicial resistance as a result of who it is who's complaining but the building is falling to shits so the question on the table would be how often does the owner come by to check on the building how often does the owner go and have things checked on before they break where's the new washer and dryer for the entire complex where's the new refrigerator there are some refrigerators that are from the first episode of the uh, of let's make a deal old ass refrigerators it's either you gonna have ice cubes or a pack of broccoli but you can't have both in there can barely fit anything in the refrigerator got an old dishwasher the first dishwasher ever made is in every complex old tub old tile old carpet, old everything, and behind the walls, mold. Stairs missing. When summer approaches, each complex is required to turn on the AC. Once again, where's the owner? If you care about your investment, then you should have the compassion to be a landlord and not a slumlord. We're going to get into it because the city, the state, you know, there are a lot of entities involved in making sure that things run right. There's millions, billions of dollars available to make sure shit runs right. But when you don't care about the people... It doesn't matter now, does it? When you are an elected official, when you have the power to help, 
when you are in a positions that be, but you don't care, that energy trickles into the community. And then here comes the outcry for help, the SOS, the flare. Because I'm paying my rent, whether it's $300, 500 2000 1500 whatever it is, I'm paying it. And I have rights. And they are not to be violated. We're going to get into it on tonight's episode of The Culture Climate, Checking the Temperature in the Culture's Climate. Hold on one second. Y'all, it's summertime. I be having to look around my room. I got my window open. Stuff. Make sure ain't nothing trying to creep up in here. All right. I'm going to pause for the cause, honey. Head on a swivel when you live in Texas. Shit. All right. Let's get into it. On tonight's episode of The Culture Climate, Checking the temperature in our culture's climate. The tenants' nightmare. When tenants' rights are violated. Also, <laughs> creating and living in filth. I guess I should kind of segue that too. Mix, the mixture of the videos that you're going to hear are about, obviously, the tenants' nightmare, code violations. And it's also about living in filth. Look, I'm not playing. Whenever you see that gold, whenever you see that extra, extra content, we're going to get into it. Creating and living in filth. What the fuck? How? 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 We're going to get into it. How can you sleep, live, eat in filth? How does it start? What, what in in some of our people in the village, what makes them not pick up trash? What makes them throw trash in their home, in their apartment, and leave it on the floor and not pick it up and let it pile up? What is it about not cleaning, not having good odors emitting from the home? What is it about some of our people that create and live in filth? That environment breeds that demon time. Piles and piles of filth created by our people. Some of our people. Tapped out, unactivated. And that filth is a community energy in some complexes. But the moment the AC goes out, oh, we can't live like this. Now you can't fucking live like this? You mean to tell me now, uh, five fucking Dorito bags later, uh, hella toilet tissue Rolls later, empty rolls later, hella shit all over the place, roaches, rats, and shit later. Now you can't fucking live like this because you sweating in here. Now you can't live like this. This ain't right. It's not. (laughs) I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Filth. It, it, it's embarrassing to the village in totality that some of our people are comfortable creating and living in filth. Let's get into it. These clips are for educational purposes only to raise awareness to educate our brothers and sisters 
about their rights as a tenant to raise awareness about creating and living in filth hoping that we as a village could do better <clears throat> no matter what position you play when it comes to the tenant's nightmare let's get into it I see you in the clips and on the other side of the clips. You are a wonderful listening audience. I appreciate you. You're wise. You are beautiful. You're pressing through. You want to make it. You are in the process of making an environment that's conducive to being upright. You're praying more, you're praising more, you're thinking better, you're eating better, you're living better. I know you are. Let's do this. The last couple days have been suffocating inside her basement apartment in Cheverly, Maryland. The only thing keeping her and her family cool is a ceiling fan. She says that it's been two weeks since she reached out to Ross Management, who runs the Cheverly Station apartment complex, hoping to get her air conditioning working in time for this heat wave. But all that comes out of her vents is warm air. Yo tengo mis dos niñas. I have two daughters. Sometimes they tell me they have headaches because of the heat inside our home. We cannot sleep. I even have to cook really early to avoid adding heat to the house. If you're paying $1,500 to $1,800 for a one-bedroom apartment, it seems like air conditioning should come with that. I think that that's just a normal request when it is 95 degrees outside. Concerned that the weekend might turn tragic, Chevrolet Mayor Casey Munyene toured the complex alongside local and county officials. In a letter to residents, Ross Management did warn tenants that air conditioning would not be available until May 30th and that after hours maintenance will not respond to calls about the AC. A Prince George's County law passed in 2020 requires landlords to activate AC between June 1st through September 30th. But County Council member Jolene Ivey says this is negligence because temperatures are above 80 degrees. This isn't an inconvenience. This is life-threatening. People die in heat like this, and we've known for days it was coming. The mayor of Cheverly says she's even more concerned for tomorrow when temperatures are expected to exceed 90 degrees with higher humidity. She even offered to take some of the residents here to City Hall where there is a sea. Some residents have installed window units even though they're not permitted. This resident said he purchased his second portable AC unit for his home that today reached 88 degrees. He says he's ready for tomorrow. Chevrolet, Rafael Sanchez Cruz, WUSA 9. Already got to get into it. This is what I am very disturbed about. You're taking these people to City Hall. Okay, so they can cool off. Mayor, don't y'all have enough money like billions of dollars to where you could put these people in a hotel? I mean, you know... You have access to the excess. So why are you not taking the time to say, look, these people are in peril. We've got a lot of money. We've got an emergency fund. We've got rollover money. Let's go ahead and do the right thing. And, <clears throat> excuse me, let's put these people in a hotel. You can take them to City Hall all you want to, but you're taking them to the place that doesn't care about them, really. Okay, you showed up. but there has to be more work done and there has to be a deeper level of meditation to where you can actually think about things ahead of time to where you can beat this type of situation. 80 degrees and they're in the house. The kids are complaining of headaches and, you know, there's there's no... Why does somebody have to get on the horn and call so many different people of status down to fix something that the owner... It's supposed to be on top of. I bet you the owner has AC. Mm. Irritating. When you don't care, when you set your care on fire, you know, this is what trickles down. 
This is what happens when you are elected, but you really don't care about the people. This is what happens when you are in it for the money and you look at the condition or you look at the people who are living in the area and you, it's, I don't know. I just think it's just an energy. It's an energy that comes around and I feel like these people are discriminated against. And just because somebody may or may not be on Section 8, why would you look at them any differently? (laughs) They're winning if they do it right. Just because you're in Section 8 also does not mean that Section 8, you know, let me not say you're winning. I'm going to retract that statement. People on Section 8 don't have to pay as much as you and I may have to pay. Okay? Also, people in Section 8, there's a stereotype that comes with that. And when you hear Section 8, you think of a specific environment, location, look, and how it's going to look inside and outside of the complex. Inside of, you know, trash all over the place, whatever, 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 whatever. Okay, and I think that some people's prejudices occupy them when they are doing business as a landlord. It's it's it, there's a lot of ingredients that go into should we help these people or not? Should we care about these people or not? Should I really give a fuck about this building or not? Should I? Should I put all my money into this building? Like, you know, maybe some of these owners don't have the humility to say that they can't afford this complex anymore. And can you imagine how do you place all these residents somewhere else? There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that are falling behind, that are falling apart, rather, that are loose in many areas. And it isn't until an appliance, such as something that is so needed as an air conditioner breaks down, that it exposes more. Mm. Lewisons, we're certainly no strangers to the summer heat, but this week we are reaching into that dangerous territory. Our Pepper Baker is live downtown with what you should be doing now to stay safe and keep cool. And drinking water and staying in the shade are really good tips that apply to everyone. But these rising temperatures are really going to impact people who are living without air conditioning. I'm sweating out here. And I'm sweating in my house. George McDonald has been living without air conditioning for five months. I got a pregnant woman living in the house with me. I got a baby on the way. I can't bring no newborn in the house and it's 102 degrees outside, but it feel like 188 degrees in my house. Several people living in the Pleasant View Garden apartments in Ferguson who didn't want to go on camera said they're also dealing with the same problem. I just been sitting in the house get with about four or five different fans going and you know that's gonna run up with the electric bill gentry trotter with cool down st louis gets daily calls from people living with broken air conditioners we tell them to go to the landlords first and make sure that those landlords accept the responsibility that's on the lease that they're supposed to help them with cooling and heating year round and if they don't then they need to call the station I went down there and told them personally, I put the order in, can y'all come down here and fix my air? They still ain't do it. Trotter says the most at risk for heat-related illnesses are the elderly, people with disabilities, and children. It's always a good idea to check on your neighbors. We want you to go to their house. We want you to feel them to make sure their body is not overheated, to make sure their electric is on, to make sure that they're air conditionings are in good working conditions and make sure those filters are clean. Trotter suggests staying with neighbors or friends who have air conditioning or visiting one of the cooling shelters listed on the St. Louis City and County websites. Do what you can do to stay out of the heat so you can beat the heat because the heat will beat you. 
uh, sir. <sighs> Listen, five months. Just let you and let's just put ourselves in this brother's shoes. What would you do if your AC goes out in your apartment for five months? How do you, how do you do it? <clears throat> and you go down to the manager, all the steps, right? Go down to the management, put in the service request, and they don't fix it. They ignore it. They received a request. They have the maintenance workers. <clears throat> But nothing gets fixed. And now you're having to raise your electricity bill by buying enough fans to try to get a breeze. But it's a hot breeze. But it's a breeze. And you're waiting for the night to come so the cool air can come in and just break some of that thick air, humidity that is suffocating you daily, how do you feel? When your rights are violated and nothing's being done, how do you cope? Because nothing's copacetic. So how do you cope? How do you be quiet without causing a riot? How do you, how do you, uh, uh, how do you get help? Can't fix it yourself. Nobody wants to be on camera because they are in fear of re retaliation. What type of energy does the management have? That would make the residents feel that if they speak out within their rights and call out and expose and whistleblow the fact that their rights are being violated, what type of energy is the management putting out that would make them feel that they can't even fight within their rights? That they would rather sweat and suffer and suffocate than deal with having to be put out because they literally barely got into this place. They have nowhere to go. It's not easy to just pick up and go. A lot of people don't have uh, enough funds available to just up and go. So it is, a, it is a difficult problem. It's a word problem. You remember school word problems. This is a real word problem. In school, they teach you about word problems, but they don't teach you about real word problems. This is a real word problem. How do we solve it? Because I see the answers, but when I select the right answer, I guess I'm getting it wrong. Even though this is the right answer, you're marking it wrong. There's something wrong with the grading system. There's, some, there's something else going on here. Because if I'm coming to you and I'm telling you, like this brother is, saying, I've got a, my, my, my girl is pregnant. I need you to fix this. People perish in the heat. But five months later, no help. Got to get the news involved. You know how trifling you have to be as an owner, as a property management, as a landlord, management, whatever you are, you know, that you would allow this to actually grow, actually linger. What are you in it for? Why are you a manager? Why are you into property management? Why are you the owner of a building if you're not going to do it right? You cannot afford not to do it right. 
You, this is not a job where you can afford not to do. I listen. Just like in surgery, you can't afford to not do it right. You need to know what you're doing. You have a life on the line that is counting on you and your ability, your skills, your knowledge to make this happen. And that is the same responsibility that a landlord, a property manager, a manager, landlord has. That's the same responsibility. My life is in your hands. According to this contract, according to what I'm paying for every month, and I'm expecting the service to be provided. I'm expecting you to do your job. Because if you don't, I could lose my life. My family could lose their life. Five months and no AC? You got to give me a church fan with a battery. I'm going to have to strap the fan on me. I'm just going to hang on the ceiling fan and just spin around. I am I am irritated by what I'm hearing and you should be too. Cool Down St. Louis has uh, applications available on their website for anybody in need of utility assistance. And the city of St. Louis also has a... Ma'am, utility assistance is a wonderful program. I'm all here for it. They are in need of utility assistance. They need the utility that they have. The utility that they have needs assistance. It needs to be fixed. Even that process is a long process. And even with utility assistance, you've got to have all your documents. You have to prove how much income is going on. And it's a lot of stuff that you have to look. Could y'all just pay the bill? Could you just please just send? Why do we have to send so much paperwork in to get the assistance? You've got billions of dollars, millions of dollars. The lights need to stay on. Yes, I need the assistance, but I don't want to have to give you all this information. Why do you need three months of bank statements? That's not your business. Well, we see here that you shouldn't be seeing here anything. Well, we need you to also... How many people are in your home? Um, why? Why? We just need uh, all the employment verification, the stubs, and just everything. Because, yeah, we just need to know how much everybody in the house is making. Look, listen, listen, listen. You know what I'm going to send you on this application? I'm going to send you an audio of the Good Time song. That's what I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you an audio of... Our tears, uh, the sound of our tears every time we uh, check our bank accounts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you an audio clip of me opening up all my bills and me throwing them down on the table and me having to say, guess we're going to have to make a payment arrangement. What do you need me to send you again? Ma'am, I need you just to send it, approve it. Look, programs. Stop requiring all these people to send so much information in just to prove the application. Stop making it so hard for people to get in. Well, we have all this money left over. What should we do? Oh, I guess we'll go to the Bahamas. Yeah. Look, what we're going to do is we're going to make them send it about 20 sheets of paperwork. 20. The requirement to get this utility assistance is going to be so hard. So hard, so long that they'll just give up. Yeah, we need utility assistance. Fix the utility. My goodness. <laughs> List of designated cooling shelters that you can find on their website. Where we have all that information available on KSDK.com. Live in St. Louis, Pepper Baker, five on your side.
Well, Latasha Givens for help in getting a faster response from the complex. We're outside this Roswell apartment complex where several residents say they've been living without working AC units for several weeks now. They say it is so hot at times, they wake up drenched in sweat. I mean, you wake up and you have sweat. Like, literally, like, you drench with water. Some residents at Crest at Riverside Apartments, which is now named Grace at Roswell, didn't want to show their faces on camera because they're concerned it could affect how the complex handles their individual situation. But they did share with 11 Alive what it's been like living without air conditioning for several weeks. I didn't have a single screen on any of my windows, so I couldn't even open the windows to get fresh air in. The only thing I could do was leave my front door open, and, you know, nobody wants to do that, and you can't do that all day. Some residents say they've taken matters into their own hands. I had to go out and purchase two window units. You know, there's families and animals and elderly kids and everyone there, and it's just kind of a tough it out. We took residents' concerns to the property manager Tuesday. They weren't available to talk, but they sent a statement acknowledging the, quote, mass number of residents currently without working ACs. The manager also says the complex has purchased portable units and window units, and they're working to get them to residents. But delivery delays have hindered that. In Roswell, Latasha Givens, 11 Alive News. Heat keep cool, and residents at a Phoenix apartment complex say they're trying, but the air conditioning doesn't work, and their repeated requests to get it fixed aren't being heard. Only ABC 15's Nohe Lani Graf is live at the Melrose Apartments on 7th Avenue. And Nohe, it sounds like some have been going back and forth with management on this for months now. Katie, it varies. Everybody's got a story. I found some folks who haven't had air conditioning since June. I found one mother who's been waiting for four months. All of them say management sets a date for a fix and then nothing happens. At this point, they are fuming. They're called the comforts of home for a reason. At the end of the day, you should be able to feel comfortable. Kind of like just sit down. It's so hot you have to move around just to get cool. Rest in your own bed. Make a nice meal for your family. I can't even cook for my kids like because it's so hot. I have to like go buy them or buy them something. None of that for Devana Terivio. Instead, she's just cooking. The air conditioning hasn't worked all summer. It's like a sauna in here. <laughs> Some vents actually blow hot air. She says maintenance considered any air a fix. That one doesn't blow nothing. Then they lent her a space cooler, but the only space it cools is the living room. So that's where her whole family now sleeps. And even at full blast... 95... That's how hot it is in here. They actually open the door for cooler air. She says her four-year-old and baby have gotten heat rash. He gets his rash right here in his face. You can kind of see it. Management has sent out a number of notices to everyone, acknowledging the problem. This notice promised to fix on Friday. Three days later, still no cold air. So unbearably hot, some have bought their own AC units. But Terivio says she can't afford that, and she shouldn't have to. I think they should fix the AC because I have kids here, and they shouldn't have to live like this. Now, we reached out to management and haven't been able to make contact yet. Meantime, we are taking action so you know your rights in this type of situation. First, you need to notify management in writing that they are violating the lease. To find a form to fill out, we have posted that, along with the three steps of action that you can take after that on our website. Just head to abc15.com. Now back to you. Listen. <clears throat> At this point, <clears throat> you're not getting any rent from me. Mm -mm. You better not send a notice to vacate. No constable better show up. You better not even think about putting me out or the rest of these residents out. You're not getting your rent on the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th, or the 5th. You're not getting it. You know when you're going to get your rent? You're going to get your rent. When the AC is fixed, that's just it, because it is unbearable for me to stay here and I don't have anywhere else to go. And on top of that, the money that I was going to pay you for the rent, I'm going to take that and I'm going to go get this window unit. I don't want a window unit, but I'm going to go get one because I'm trying to beat the heat for my family or for myself. But you're not getting your rent and I'm going to let you know that in writing and I'm going to. I, along with the rest of these residents, are going to do what we have to do 
in order to make sure that none of us get put out because you sent a letter. And the letter said, by Friday, things are going to be back on. Things aren't back on. You did that to pacify us. <clears throat> Excuse me. You did that to pacify those people. But ultimately, you knew that it was not going to be fixed by Friday. So you don't get any rent. There's no way you could expect me to pay rent when you aren't doing what you need to do. Now, does that mean that you don't pay rent? No, it doesn't. But what it means is there has to be some type of proratedness that is discussed and agreed upon by the landlord, the owner, property management, the powers that be that can barely compensate us for this major life-threatening inconvenience. I'm not advocating not paying your rent. But I am advocating standing in your rights and letting them know that you cannot expect this from me contractually and expect me to abide by it in good faith when you're not abiding by what you said contractually in good faith. We're sleep they're sleeping in the living room and the unit is at 95 degrees like they have to open up the door to get cooler air. The children have heat rash. People are waking up drenched. So you know, oof, mm, the smell that can come from a home that is not clean in those type of conditions, which ties into <clears throat> what we're speaking about, which is creating filth and living in it. That is the worst time to have an appliance such as an AC unit go out. Living in that filth that is already full of bacteria, mold, E. coli, and various forms of just bullshit, nastiness. You mix that with heat? Oh, shit. Oh. Oh my, if the fuck were a smell, the odor that emits from that filth in the heat, mix that with people that ain't really tripping off of bathing, showering, getting in that ass. Oh my. Oh my. Can you imagine here you are? working for the news and you've gotten a call about this situation at this complex and you and the crew go and you just walk on, you knock on a, on a random door just trying to hear their story. Hi, my name is uh, Jennifer with Channel 4, 5, 6, 7 News and I just wanted to, you know, talk to you about what's going on and they walk in there and like, oh my gosh, uh-huh. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Ma'am, I didn't get a chance to tell you about what's going on. No, I see. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's like literally walking into that and having to interview somebody in that bullshit. Oh, my. Being a maintenance worker and having to go into that apartment complex to fix it in the midst of all that filth. There's a lot going on. There is a lot going on on in this <clears throat> listening to these clips and hearing about the poor management on on many levels y'all on many levels what would you do if you went about an ac unit and you still can't beat the heat do you have enough money to put yourself off into a hotel until they fix it got somewhere you can stay Got family you can count on? How will you beat the heat if the unit goes out where you live? And how do you beat the heat if they don't fix it in the time frame that they said they would? Is your money long enough to sustain another place? Until they fix it.
Seniors in Dearborn are sweltering in the heat. Two different complexes, we're told, are without air conditioning. Seven's Taking Action reporter Amira David spoke with some of those seniors today as they try to cope with the dangerous temperatures. Amira, what are they saying? Yeah, it's very difficult, as you can imagine. I'm right now at Hubbard Manor East. This is one of two senior complexes now facing no air condition. In fact, I spoke with one woman not too long ago off camera who told me, look, I, I had two seizures last night as a result of this heat. So this is a narrative shared by many, many, many people uh, here at these two complexes. I'm on the case to get them some help. Feels like somebody's got you bound up from the head to the to the feet, totally bound, and you can't just can't breathe. Mary Cromley is short on breath, all the result of simply sitting in her apartment. I have asthma, and I know there are others in the building who have it as well. She lives here at Hubbard Manor West, where more than 200 tenants, some of them with serious health conditions, are grappling with no AC. When we paid the building a visit, we saw seniors sitting outside hoping for a breeze or convening in the lobby, the only spot where cool air is flowing. Sid Como says he'd rather spend his Memorial Day here than in his 80-degree-plus apartment. I've got a fan in a bedroom, and I've got a fan in a living room. It helps a little, but, you know, a lot of people don't have fans. That includes this couple, who lives in Hubbard Manor East, the sister complex on the other side of town, dealing with the very same problem. You can feel my skin. It's, it's, it's dry. I just got out of the shower. You're probably wanting to take cold showers, not hot showers. That's what I did. Took a cold shower, yeah. The couple says they're coping by keeping the blinds closed and drinking plenty of fluids. These two complexes are run by the Dearborn Housing Department. Tenants say they were told the AC simply needed to be turned on for the season. But despite being told that would happen this past Friday, tenants say they were told it would be pushed back until as late as Wednesday of this week. So I got on the phone looking for answers when is this ac coming out nobody has an idea and look that's the question that tenants want answered at this point the good news i did get a hold of the chief of police in dearborn ron haddad he said we are going to make this a priority he got in touch within five minutes with the mayor's office and together they say they're going to try to come back out here this evening and attempt an emergency boot up of the air condition. We're hoping that can happen. And of course, we're going to continue to follow the developments here and bring you all the updates. For now, reporting live in Dearborn, Amira David, 7 Action News. Let's happening right now, an entire apartment complex without water for more than 24 hours. Our newsroom flooded with emails and phone calls from frustrated tenants. Management appears to be working on the problem, but tenants are outraged. As soon as we heard about this, we sent 13 Action News reporter Annalise Ortiz to get answers. We came out here to the Sandpiper Apartments after receiving dozens of emails and phone calls about no running water. As soon as we got here, we noticed crews working on the plumbing, but tenants tell us this has just taken way too long. But this is what it is. Tenants say they've had no water since early yesterday morning. Now, they are under the impression the water was shut off so crews could make upgrades, but multiple people tell us they were given no warning the water would be turned off. They also tell us the water has been shut off without warning before. Management is nowhere in sight, but it appears as though they are trying to keep people happy. A water delivery truck was brought here this afternoon, and porta potties have been set up also. But at this point, tenants tell us it's not enough. They just do it, and then um, we'll go down to the office, we'll do complaints, and they don't even tell us. They say, oh, it'll be like two hours or three hours, but it'll be a whole day situation. I just wish that <laughs> they would get to straighten it with corporate because corporate's just as bad a corporate office and we're all looking for some compensation for this under nevada law having no running water is considered an essential need and landlords have 48 hours to start fixing the problem it appears as though management is already working towards that but we do plan to follow up with them reporting near decatur and oki annalise ortiz 13 action news as you can see here, the grass is past my ankles. And right behind me, there's a load of trash of Gatorade bottles, diapers, and so much more. I spoke to residents, and they say that is just the beginning of the problems that they're facing at Emerald Point Apartments. We don't got no air. The grass don't get cut. 
I mean, my house, we don't have no water in the kitchen. We haven't had water in a minute. Nobody's picking it up, putting it in the can. The cans get over flooded. It's not enough cans, and now they don't have any maintenance people or any grounds people. Everybody keeps quitting. Sherita Wilson tells us she's been living at the apartment complex for more than a year and says her complaints aren't being heard. She feels as though it is a hamster wheel. Now, I've been asking for two or three months about the rodents. I have an eight-year-old granddaughter that lives with me, and for us to get up early in the morning and, and something's running across the floor, it's not good. However, she is not the only one having this experience. I have to go back and forth to the office at least twice a month. When we arrived, many residents ran outside to tell us their stories. Two said they bought their own air conditioning units, and another said they have started cutting the grass themselves. They wanted to stay anonymous due to the fear of retaliation, but they all believe the new management is the problem. Just with these new landlords, I've been having issues. Beforehand, no issue. Grounds kept, garbage taken care of. They had maintenance people. They had groundskeeper. And when the company switched over, it's like everything just fell apart. New people in the office, this is really what happened. Because the old people, they was kind of good. So they moved out, got new people, it got bad. We tried talking to management to get answers. But the only answer we received was them locking the leasing office doors and closing the blinds. There are five 311 complaints from the apartment complex. One is still in progress. We have reached out to the city for more information about these complaints. In Fox Meadows, Jessica Knotts, WRG News, Channel 3. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> Listen, I, as I mentioned before, if the management is shysty, it that energy is going to affect the entire complex. I also told you that this is about creating and living in filth, the dangers of it. Look, I would quit too. I'm not going to even hold you. Yes. I want my brothers and sisters to have everything that they're supposed to have where they live. I want their heat on and their, you know, lights on, water on and AC working. I want I want all of what they have to work. But listen, they got to want that too. What you mean, sister speak? Check this in. There's some apartments that are not fucking going in. I heard about you. I heard about what the fuck y'all got going on in that house, in that apartment. I ain't going in there. I don't care what's not working. If you call me into the office and you say, okay, we got some service requests in, I'm suddenly, I don't know if you can get laryngitis in your ears, but I got laryngitis in my ears. I can't really hear you. And I got laryngitis in my eyes. I can't really see you. I got laryngitis in my legs. I got I got laryngitis in my tools. As a matter of fact, my certification to fix anything in their apartment got laryngitis. Like, no. Mm -mm. I'm not knocking on apartment 434's door. Mm -mm. I'm not going in there and having to hope that don't nothing crawl on me, jump on me, wiggle my array around all the trash and the filth just to fix something that went out. I'm not doing I Fire me. I can see why. I ain't going in there. I, look, when you create filth and you live in filth, the maintenance man may not be coming to your door. You may not get your shit fixed is what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that you may have to, you and whoever is living with you, you may have to go on YouTube and figure the fuck, figure it out, figure it the fuck out. You may have to like figure how to fix this yourself because until you clean up the filth, until you stop creating and living in filth, People are going to be put the fuck off by you. They're going to be 
disgusted by your choice to create and live in it because before you got there, there, none of this shit was in here. But you don't throw away shit. You literally throw your shit on the floor and keep it pushing. Garbage bags? What, what the fuck's that? Trash bag? What's that? Clean? What's that? Shower? What's that? No, I'm going to let all this shit pile up. I create filth. When that is your lifestyle, you are part of the reason why the complex sucks. You're part of the reason why the complex is nasty, filthy, disgusting, a petri dish for all kind of bullshit to grow and latch on to people because you create and live in filth. Some of you don't don't take the time to throw the garbage in the garbage bin. I'm not talking about when it's full. I'm talking about when it's not full. You don't care. You literally will throw your shit out in front of the complex. Why take it to the garbage can? Mm-mm. That doesn't compute. Literally just trash the whole fucking complex nasty dog shit everywhere roaches everywhere rats bed bugs critters critters crotters all kind of just shit gremlins grumlins gromlins just all kind of just feces foces feces just uh, just disgusting and collectively that is the energy that that most people are on throw shit anywhere not clean up shit don't care junk filth trash don't care and you want to know why the maintenance man ain't coming i wouldn't come either i'm not inspecting shit i'm not throw the whole apartment away Mm mm-hmm Some of our people need to come file a complaint on themselves. I know you called the mayor, but can you call yourself now? Can you file it? Can you call 311 and report yourself? This isn't right. So many things aren't right. You're right. You're, like I said, AC units should be up and running. Okay? It should be up and running. But them roaches shouldn't be up and running. Them rats shouldn't be up and running. And then you got your children up and running in that. That's what's the most disgusting part about it. Is that your babies are in that. He don't give a fuck. Creating filth, living in filth, teaching your children that it's okay to create and live in filth, not to clean, but to just trash, litter in your own home. Been talking about, but no air conditioning inside. Those are the conditions seniors were forced to suffer through at a senior living complex in St. Anne. The News 4's John Kipper found the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, that's right, David. We were at the facility earlier this afternoon, and while the AC did turn back on for the most part, it was still very hot in certain places. We seniors with health conditions unable to beat the heat. I slept with my door open and just prayed nobody come and came in on me. Seniors with serious health conditions stuck in a hot building with no running water. The building was too hot. Sidney Harden was able to escape his sweltering hot 14th floor apartment to crash at his friend's home. Harden's heart condition does not allow him to be anywhere above 85 degrees. Heat rises, so my apartment is too hot 
for me to be there. And when I tried to stand up, I was getting dizzy and lightheaded. News 4 went into the Santa Ana apartment complex around 445 today. It's very stuffy. Finally, the water and air conditioning is back on for the most part. We're in one apartment on the 11th floor. And just to give you an example of the heat, the AC is on high. But if you can tell, the temperature inside the room is somewhere in the mid-80s. But as we roamed around, we found other issues. I am still living with mold on my AC unit, blowing the mold into my home. We went inside Barbara Cassidy's unit and found mold in multiple spots. And she wasn't the only resident with mold. It has appeared some recent flooding added to the issue. It has flooded out uh, last week. Uh, the mold is growing tremendously in my closet. Along with other creatures creeping around. The roaches I still have. News 4 reached out to Eagle Point Companies, the business that runs the facility. It's based in Maine, calling about an apartment complex in St. Anne, Missouri. News 4 also called the management number for the complex itself. We still have not heard back. Walking through the facility, we saw ceiling tiles missing in multiple places. We're told there was also a kitchen fire on Tuesday. Some residents say they never even heard a fire alarm. All these problems causing serious mental health issues for some that call this building home. I'm 56 years old. I feel like I'm sitting here waiting to die. And we still have not heard back from Eagle Point at this outer at this hour. And out of around a dozen people we spoke to on and off camera, almost every single one told us they don't believe the company employee treats them with respect. In fact, one person told me they feel like a prison inmate. Reporting in studio, John Kipper, News 4. John, thank you. Hey, it is time for action at the Dusker Manor housing complex. For years now, city leaders and residents have raised concerns about mold, lack of AC, and bed bugs, just to name a few. They say the local metro housing authority needs to take action now. Council members Tammy Hawkins and Ja'Cory Arthur say they understand Mayor Greenberg's office inherited this issue at the start of the year, but say these residents need immediate help. Our team was there being allowed inside some of those units, and you can see the bugs. Mold in the bathrooms, leaking drywall, the list went on. One resident made a plea directly to Mayor Greenberg for help. I wish the mayor would, would, would come in here and clean this place up. We got black mold. We got uh, our bathrooms just uh, coming, coming down. Council members say they are going to come up with a timeline for action items, but did not give too many specifics. We reached out to the Metro Housing Authority for comment. It said it received reports of mold in three units last Friday and arranged for environmental testing, saying property maintenance staff inspected three additional units and no indicators of mold were found. Now, when it comes to the bugs, it said licensed exterminators attempted to inspect every unit on a quarterly basis. And in the two units that complained of bugs last Friday, only minor indications of bugs were identified and proper treatment was provided and follow-ups as scheduled. They encourage any resident with property maintenance concerns to report them right away. Let me explain something to you. If there's something going on in my residence and it's going on in other people's residence and you come to my complex, my building, my apartment to fix the problem, I need you to bring the biggest fucking canister you can find. The biggest canister you can find. No, don't come in here with no banaka size, banaka's a breast spray. Don't come in here with no banaka size treatment. Don't be coming here with no little psh, psh. Uh-uh. The canister does not need to have that sound when it comes into my apartment to get rid of the gremlins. Mm -mm. Don't you come in here tiptoeing in a ballerina outfit talking about psh, psh, psh. What the fuck is that going to do? What is psh, psh, psh going to do? Mm -mm. <clears throat> I need something that has the strength of a fire hose, okay? I need the solutions, the liquids that you guys have. No, I need to come out the way water comes out of a fire hose when we're putting out a fire. Mm -hmm. No, I ain't talking about no garden hose, fire hose. I need this to be on maximum gush. <laughs> I need everything in here annihilated, 
don't want anything left standing. Don't want any babies that's on the way to live. I don't want nothing. Don't come in here talking about psh, psh. Oh, no, we don't. This one is just minor. No. Major. Maximum strength. Like, there should never, ever, I don't even know why everything isn't maximum strength. Don't come in here. I need you to come in here with a canister that is like the size of a keg. Mm hmm. Like, for beers, like, the treatment for this needs to be in a keg <laughs> with a fire hose. <laughs> no, I'm finna leave. No, you can gush this whole thing. Talking about some minor treatment. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you right now. I don't play that shit. Get it all. Every crack, every crevice. As a matter of fact, don't show up to my door to fight the gremlins without a gremlin outfit on. Okay? I need you to have the full, we finna do this. This ain't, they don't stand a chance. I need you to have on the I want all the smoke outfit on. I need the fuck around and find out outfit on. That's what I need you to have on. Don't show up at my door with some fucking dickies on. This is war. You need to have camouflage on when you show up for this shit. Okay? I need you to have on a real fit for this. You where is why are you, where's your nuclear war outfit on? Where is it? Why don't you have it on? Why are you showing up to my house in some dickies? My co- my apartment. With, did you not see the service request? Did you not hear? We made it to the news. They're loose. What, what is psh, psh, psh going to do? What is this? You need to put a battery in that. A minor treatment? Absolutely not. Don't show up at my door without the right fit on for an infestation. Hi, we're here to treat your problem. Put some fucking bass in your voice. Where is the mighty and battle war cry voice? Why are you sitting here sounding like um, you're singing a cappella? What is this falsetto energy I'm getting from you? I need you to be at a tenor bass. <laughs> when you come to my door, knowing that we, there's, there's an infestation, I need you to be at my door like, yo, what's up? I'm here for the problem. That's what I need. I need confidence. I need bass. <laughs> I need you to have a tour of duty tone. Call of Duty tone. When you pull up, you better pull up in a tank. Don't you pull up in no damn Datsun. No damn Ford Fiesta. You can fuck if it's hybrid or not. Nigga, what the, what's in my house is hybrid. I need you to pull up in a tank to this complex. The sh- Minor treatment. Everything's going to be okay. Don't come in here. Don't don't finish the job and say, okay, everything should be all right now. No, I'll be like, nah, nigga, we did that shit. Nah, nigga, you ain't never got to worry about this shit again. Nah, nigga, it, nothing left. Merc City, 187. Murder was the case that I gave it. I need pistol grip pump on my lap at all time energy for the gremlins. I'm just saying, though. <laughs> they have mold growing in their apartments from leaks, and they can't get it fixed. But it's a health hazard, and renters have rights you might not have known about. Consumer reporter Heather Sullivan has some smart sense on what renters can do. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, Houston couple with three young children say that they have water leaks and mold growing in their Houston apartment, but they say they can't get their apartment management to do anything about it. So here's where 
all of this deterioration come from but i'm gonna take you to the top christina lee says she's had several leaks in her apartment ceiling and walls it says mold has been growing since last fall it's more of a safety hazard it's more of a health hazard my kids they run around here they can't take baths lee says she's experienced coughing and congestion and worries about her family she says she sent this letter certified mail this week after reporting it multiple times to management at the graham apartments at 250 uvalde road in houston she says a repairman came once before it collapsed he poked a hole in it and said he was done and i was just like that's it you're not going to request any type of service or any type of, you know, plumbing to this apartment. Mold expert Michael Rubino says breathing in mold can cause serious health problems. Uh, shortness of breath, uh, respiratory tract issues, uh, congestion, uh, runny nose, like the kind of like the onset of a cold that never quite goes away. He says when there are leaks, mold can grow inside the wall. Most of the problems with mold is the fact that it is hidden and out of sight, out of mind. Uh, for instance, you can have a window leaking, and it could be leaking behind the wall. Lee says she just wants a safe home for her family. We need to be relocated. We need to be um, put, properly put somewhere else. We contacted the Graham Apartments. A manager said that she would call the Lees and then call us back. We still have not heard back yet. Uh, attorneys tell us that if you are a renter with mold in your home, you need to notify your landlord in writing twice, at least a week apart. If it's still not fixed in a reasonable amount of time, you can either terminate the lease, make that repair yourself, or sue the landlord to have it fixed. With Sullivan Smart Sense, I'm Heather Sullivan, Fox 20. That was the some of the dumbest advice I've ever heard. And here's why. Let me just break this down. If more people... It, it, let, let, let me start over. There would be a lot of apartment buildings torn down because the level of mold that is hidden behind the walls is ridiculous and in order to successfully treat such an a, a growth as mold it requires a procedure that will require you to cut into the walls and to address the situation to address the leaks there's a process and a procedure that costs a lot of money and the owners don't want to shell out that cash they don't want to take the time out to shell out the funds that are required. It would require everybody to move out in order to fix the problem successfully. We're not talking about putting a Band-Aid on it, which is what they want you to do. What, what the fuck? How am I going to fix the, the problem myself when there's a leak in your building? Now I got to move. Now I have to do your job. How am I supposed to cut through the walls and fix the leak when I'm a tenant? When I don't have the certification, the skills, nor am I supposed to. Who the fuck made that suggestion? Fix it yourself and I'll send in the receipt. Look. What type of Fisher Price advice is that? That's that Google advice that you get on the fifth page of looking for whatever the whatever your problem is. That's when it starts getting in written in all kind of different languages and stuff. Just what? You'd have to tear down the buildings. You would have to literally cut open the walls and remove sheetrock to find out where the leak is coming from, how to stop it. Then you got to get rid of the mold, spray the mold, and that's going to require everybody to have to leave. And the owners don't want to endure that cost. Where are you going to put all the people? Now you're creating homelessness, the potential for homelessness. It's a mess. And it's a mess that could have been protected by 
Number one, weatherization, updating, and there are funds available to get weatherization for free. Replacing window units with up-to-date compliant windows that reduce the risk of having leaks. It's about getting the roofers on, you know, on the roof to inspect the roof to make sure that everything is right. The decking isn't compromised. It's about making sure that there aren't any rodents that are chewing away at certain parts of the roof, getting in and and, and creating the hole for the leak to get into it. I mean, it's about empathy. It's about not being a slumlord. Why should I have to write you so many times about the mold? Why should I have to keep sending certified letters for you to understand there's a problem? Six News. Infestation. A family says they found dozens of mice in just the past two months inside their home. They feel their apartment complex isn't doing enough to fix the problem. RTV6's Stephanie Wade is working for you to hold them accountable and reaches out to the health department to see what they're doing. This family has about 12 mouse traps throughout their home. Take a look. You can see one in here and then just around the corner, another one. They say they've caught about 12 mice since September and it's gotten to be unacceptable. It's devastating. Tamara and Thomas Cook are sick of finding mice all over their apartment. I have a 10-year-old. Uh, she's terrified to sleep at night. It's, it's hard for me to sleep. I think I have anxiety. They live at Hunt Club Apartments on the northeast side and say they've called the management several times. The maintenance team has set traps and treated the unit, but mice just keep getting in. It's a problem, and it needs to be fixed. What more are we supposed to do here? The Marion County Health Department tells me they issued a housing order to the property owner for several violations for mice and repairs, including cracks, holes, and deterioration in the walls near the floor, which could be where the mice are entering from. I also found another apartment unit was cited for mice as well. Both are scheduled for reinspection later this month. It's getting cold. You know, mice are just like we are. They're mammals, so they, they got to stay warm. So just like we want to in the wintertime, they need to get inside too. The company that manages Hunt Club Apartments tells me, quote, we are committed to finding a resolution that satisfies the cooks. We are happy to bring in a second professional opinion to further examine the unit and formulate a solution. A solution, the cooks hope, comes sooner than later. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Listen, let me explain a few things to you. If I write you, if I come down to you, and I tell you, and I show you that there are mice in my home, my apartment complex, several, I'm laying down traps, and this is becoming a the first mind, the first first one that comes out is a problem. Let me explain something to you. You don't do anything about it, and <clears throat> you go home. When you can come back, you're gonna find the apartment gone. Mm-hmm. The whole apartment's gonna be gone, gone. Where's the apartment, sister? So speak in the garbage. Mm-hmm. I cut the apartment out the wall myself, and I threw it in the garbage. Mm -hmm, Sure did. Yeah. Where's the apartment? In the garbage. I burned the bitch. Mm Mm-hmm. Burned the bitch to the ground. Yep. Set this whole bitch on fire. Just mine. I didn't set anybody else's on fire. You see, everybody else still got their apartment. Mine cremated. Gone. Where are you going? I'm going to Walmart. As a matter of fact, I'm going to Costco. For what? An apartment. Yeah, I'm going to go to Costco and buy me an apartment. I'm going to go to Walmart and buy me an apartment. What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? We think that the mice might be coming in from the floor. You think the building has to be torn down at this point. There's nothing 
that can be done with people there. The people have to be gone. You ain't got to worry about my apartment, though, because I burned that bitch to the ground. I sure did. Uh Uh-huh. Well, we didn't hear the fire department. Oh, it was a holy fire. Yeah, no, this was spiritual. Uh Uh-huh, the angels were there. Mm Mm-hmm. No, it was, um, yeah, it was a fire. Uh, shut up in the home. I don't play that shit. I will leave that day. There is no traps to be set. Mm Mm-mm. Fire to be set. Ain't no traps. I am not trying to turn this into a trap house. I'm not trying to trap these mice. They're loose. That means that I'd have to clean it up. I'm not doing that. I will project out throw up all in this apartment complex. When you walk into this complex, you better have on a whole wetsuit. Because you're going to be walking into the midst of vomit and riot and mice. out of control y'all and this goes back to also creating and living in film now sometimes it doesn't have to deal with the filth. it hasn't doesn't have anything to do with filth at all it could be that construction is going on nearby and it's running them out of where they were into another location which is still a problem. <clears throat> still a problem. Okay? But just guarantee I will burn the apartment to the ground. There's no 311, 211, 911, 411. You ain't got to worry about this shit. I've had it. Have you ever had it? Have you ever just had it to where you sprang into action? Because you didn't have it. Nah, fuck this shit. You ever had that season where it was a, nah, fuck that shit. And you just sprang into action. I too. No, I ain't going to sleep. Mm Mm-mm. For what? They're loose in the house. Sleep has now been taken hostage. I shouldn't have to buy a tent in my apartment and live in my tent Because there are rodents loose. The owners don't want to relinquish the building. They don't want to tear it down. They don't want to house the residents while they fix the problem. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. Al 5 at Costco. May I help you? Are you looking for something? I'm looking for a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment. Oh, we have some right here. Okay, thank you. You have a nice day. Would you like some help carrying your apartment to the car? I've got it. Thanks. Would you like a box for your apartment? I've got it. Thanks. (laughs) To prevent mice from getting into your home, Action Pest Control recommends pest-proofing the outside of your house, sealing any cracks or holes. If a mouse does get inside, put traps in different rooms to catch them. And if you find one, beware there may be more. Because these animals breed. Surveillance. Thanks. Thanks for the thanks for the vote of anxiety. Hi. I'm gonna deliver the news and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave them with some anxiety. By the way, there could be more. What's that? <laughs> be careful. There could be more. <laughs> Guys, thanks. That ain't Chuck E. Cheese. That's Chuck E. Cheese's. This video shows the collapse that brought down part of an apartment building in Davenport, Iowa, Sunday afternoon. Three men still missing in that building are believed to be dead. First responders are shifting from rescue to recovery operations. And listen to this. A 911 call just released reveals a man tried to warn authorities about that building the day before the collapse. The wall is vaulting now. Um, it, it's been under repair. 
and they, someone is there working on it and told them to get out of the way because it's not looking good. Here's what else we've learned. The fire department did reportedly come to the scene, but was there for just a few minutes and left. Tonight, the mayor said that's being investigated. Watch breaking news. Mourns the death of their eight-year-old and plan a public vigil. The apartment complex where he died has now received, as we understand it, 23 code compliance violations in the past. Reporter Aaron Jones, all new at 10 o'clock. In his 20-plus years in working in code compliance, he's never seen such a tragic situation. So I was extremely concerned when I pulled up. Andrew Espinoza arriving at the Doral Apartments in North Dallas last Saturday to find no fence around the pool where Keydell Jones, a nonverbal and severely autistic 8-year-old, had been found dead that morning after running away from his parents the day before. Apartment complex management says there was a temporary barrier around the pool, but it was taken down for construction by the contractor for a construction project. Really, the, the, the enclosure being, you know, taken down was, was something that was just very unfortunate. And had we been made aware of it, we would have responded immediately. Even though this pool is under construction, he says it is still the contractor and the apartment complex's responsibility to make sure that it has an adequate enclosure around it. The pool enclosure or barrier is supposed to be four feet high. The barrier has to prevent any uh, four-inch sphere to pass between the vertical or horizontal slats um, to prevent children from accessing the pool. A notice of violation was given for this and more than 20 other violations. Espinoza says the complex is working to get back into compliance. Meanwhile, Dallas police are investigating, and Jones's family has hired an attorney. It's a very low bar to keep a child from dying in a pool. Now the goal is to make sure this never happens again. We need the community's help that see that perhaps there's an issue with the swimming pool, a missing barrier, a missing fence, a busted door. Please call 311. Code Compliance is committed to responding within 24 hours when we get a pool complaint. In Dallas, Aaron Jones, CBS 11 News. It's just complex and the management team there. We have so far not heard back from them. With 74 code violations. We told you last week about dozens of tenants living without working air conditioning. 13 News Now reporter Nico Clemens is back out at Aqua Vista Apartments where temperatures are high again today. Tonight, more violations at Aqua Vista Apartments in Newport News. It's very upsetting. 74. That's how many code citations Newport News Codes Compliance issued to the complex in the last week. From AC units not working to mold infestation, plumbing leaks, and hazardous electrical systems. Joy Johnson is not surprised at all. I heard it was about 100 units that were out. She's lived at Aqua Vista almost a year. She says not only is her AC out, but there's mold in her apartment. Johnson says contractors are finally fixing her AC, but now she has bigger concerns. It's the mold that I'm now worried about. The 74 code violations come more than a week after codes compliance issued more than two dozen citations against the complex for broken AC units. And I had to stay at my daughter's house last night and all, basically all day today. Codes Compliance started its investigation June 19th. Last week, the agency told us that there were 26 or 27 AC units not working. Now they say since issuing the citations, 37 AC units do not work properly. And that number may have changed since then. Delegate for the 95th District, Marcia Price, says she saw our story last week and jumped into action. I just wanted to make sure that their concerns were being heard, not only by Coast Compliance, but also by HUD. She says she's doing as much as she can to help the tenants, but right now it's a waiting game. And it's quite heartbreaking. Johnson knows it's going to take some time to address many of these issues, including hers. It is very upsetting to see that it has come to having to have you guys come out here. And Code's compliance gave management two weeks to fix all the AC units, so they should all be fixed by next Tuesday. As far as those other violations, Code Compliance, they're giving management 30 days. That's standard. Now, I did reach out to Edgewood Management Corporation. They own Aqua Vista. I sent several emails and left messages, but I have not heard back from them. In Newport News, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. You are currently listening to the Tenant's Nightmare, Violating Tenant's Rights, The Dangers of Creating and Living in Filth on the Culture Climate, Checking the Temperature in the Culture's Climate on the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. 
rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. Those are not hot flashes that you're experiencing. You're listening to The Culture Climate, raising the temperature in controversial conversations on the Sister Speak show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action, a talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. Let's get back to the show. Being able to pull back your sexual energy and have self-control in an area where you once didn't is an accomplishment. Being able to be focused because you are tired of the old you. Tired of the crying. Tired of being disappointed. Tired of being a part of the hit it and quit it. Tired of the one night stand. Tired of being told that they love you when they really don't. They just wanted your sexual energy. You're also tired of telling people, no, you're not coming over and you will not be a booty call. You're serious about your celibacy. The feelings come and they go. Sometimes you're tempted and sometimes you're not. The overall objective is to remain celibate, but there are some people who don't care about your celibacy. Next on the vent session, pressed for pleasure. When your celibacy is tested, the dangers of being on demon time. Rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. The Sister Speak Show wants to be with you on the go. It's simple. Just add us to your podcast shuffle so we can be the flavor in your ear. You'll be glad that you did. We are rated R for strong language thoughts and ideas, but I know you know that already. Thank you in advance for downloading and for being a wonderful listening audience. The last thing that anybody has time for is to get sick. Nobody wants to be man or woman down, but this rash, the itching, the vomiting, the fatigue, you and your partner know that something is wrong. This is going to require a trip to the ER. You're about to find out that you are a part of the statistics. There is an outbreak and you and your reckless decisions have caused you to put your life on the line. I know you want to turn back the hands of time because you did not envision your life ending up like this. Next on the culture climate, syphilis, the outbreak from pleasure to prescription to peril. Rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. Although she's smiling, she has a secret and this secret could destroy the entire dynamic of the family. A man expects his child to be his child. He expects Junior to be Junior if he's senior. However, paternity fraud continues to run rampant. It is not yet a crime punishable by law, so women continue to get away with it, targeting men after men who believe that they are the father. That means that people believe that these are their nieces, nephews, grandchildren, and cousins. How can a woman celebrate a lie? Who's devastated in the end? The children. Next on the culture climate, the lineage leech. When paternity fraud destroys the family tree. Vision, 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 sound, 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 action, 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 create, 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 inspire, 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 impact, 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 evolve, 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 evolve. You are now, you are now, you are now, activate, activate. Welcome back to the culture climate. Checking the temperature and the culture's climate on the Sister Speak Show Network. I'm your host, Sister Speak. It is 48 minutes after 12 a.m. Central Standard Time. How you living? How you breathing? How you vibing? Mm. Listening to those clips is something else, right? Oh my gosh. Let me adjust the sound. There we go. I mean, code violations <clears throat> that are growing, service requests that are being unanswered, promises to fix 
what is broken, not happening, tenants suffering, people having medical episodes, skin rashes, mold, infestations. It's a nightmare. It's the tenant's nightmare. And there are rights that are being violated. And one thing that, I, that sticks out that I know you heard is this fear of retaliation, which they cannot do. But if you don't read your rights as a tenant, you will live in fear and the enemy working through these people will be able to cross boundaries and get away and get away with things that they should not be able to get away with. And once they cross those boundaries, because they know that you don't have the resources to just up and go, they know that your situation is tight, they know that you're, you have a, a, a big family or, or not, they play on your situations. And when they play on your situations, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to turn down the volume even more. When they play on your situation, you know, it, it, it gives them power that they're not supposed to have. So the thing about it is, are our people who feel like there is a fear of retaliation, are they going to put themselves in a better position to where they, re- where they can represent themselves better uh, in life? To where they don't have to always feel like they're hiding or have to be on the run or don't want to blow up their spot. You know, I let's just be real. Some people get into apartments because they're using, you know, fake paycheck stubs. They, they, they fake their way into the apartment and they're not trying to rock the boat. But now they're in a, they're in a situation where I really shouldn't even be in this apartment. But I've got a major issue that I need fixed in the apartment. I'm not trying to blow up my spot, but I'm in in between a rock and a hard place because this needs to be fixed. It's crazy how people will use your lack of knowledge and fear to rule you, to dictate you, manipulate you, take from you, oppress you. I don't know why people don't want to read what their rights are. I don't know why people don't want to read the lease agreement. I don't know why people don't want to spend $15 possibly or less to join an association that will give them free, that will give them, not free, but a wealth of knowledge that will help them be a better, stronger, wiser tenant. It's crazy how how much neglect is going on in these complexes. How far one has to go to get help. And how deplorable the conditions are, okay? Let's move into something that I wanted to just dive in, just to dive into just a little bit deeper. And then I'm leaving off this microphone and getting ready to get some good rest. Creating the dangers of creating and living in filth. Spiritually, you can live in filth, okay? You can live in filth. And everything on the outside may appear to be together, but internally living in filth. And you can only look together for so long, but it will begin to spill out to the external. Spiritual filth is the worst kind of filth to occupy your mind. A cesspool that is a breeding ground <clears throat> for demonic activity to have its way for the lowest 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 points in excuse me excuse me in certain emotions 
such as depression, grief, other things like that. The lowest, the lowest that you can go in it, you can land there. And some people will literally take up residence in their field. They will squat in it. That spiritual filth consists of several ingredients, but it is a stench like none other. And when you are spiritually filthy, you will be, everything around you will eventually or immediately be filthy. The way you walk, talk, act, move, eat, live, everything. Filthy, no glow, dusty, musty, crusty, crunchy, dingy, no glow, spiritually ashy, spiritually funky, critters, spiritual critters, all kind of just grime and gook and just gutterness on the inside and now You live like that because you don't give a fuck. Whatever latched on had its way, wasn't addressed, wasn't dealt with. And if mama lived like this and grandmama lived like this, then that's generational filth. where you are comfortable living in filth, generational filth. Where you get into your car and it's just shit and filth everywhere. Girl, just move that over. What? Where do I start? You know, car stink, house stink, house smelling like urine, house smelling like shit, filth. And the house didn't start that way. The home, the the, the residence did not. It was vacant and it had a chance. But you, but 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 that energy moved into it, that filth moved into it and tore it up from the ceiling to the floor. Filth. Just throwing shit anywhere. And it isn't until you find out that there's going to be an inspection that you clean. Not realizing that there's been an inspection spiritually the entire time. And it says, filth. Tear down the building. Condemn the building. Filth. Creating it. And then expecting, expecting everyone to be raising children. In filth, exposing children to filth, not giving them a chance, not even knowing that there's a chance to be given, filth, shit and nasty, just nastiness everywhere, filth. Spiritual filth, physical filth, it needs to be spoken about. This is not a situation where, oh, you think you're better than somebody else. (laughs) Nah. We ain't supposed to like filth. We're not supposed to be a host for filth. Cleanliness is next to godliness. We are to be clean people. 
We are to be people of good measure. We are to be tidy, organized, fragrant, in an upright vibration. <laughs> that's what we are that's what we are supposed to be. We're not supposed to be filthy. And, you know, living in filth, but you're coming out with a $200 lace front, filthy, putting that fresh wig on that dirty scalp, filthy, but, you know, you're fitted, but you live in filth. You have sex in that filth. Making babies in that field. Just over there having sex by all kind of McDonald's bags and shit. Just filthy. <clears throat> I don't understand how you could be loving it. Filth. And it's, it's disgusting how many complexes all over the United States are full of filth and filthy people. That are all shades of brown. <clears throat> won't cut down on the roaches. Won't cut down on the infestation. Just nasty. And I just don't understand why you won't clean. There's a spiritual code violation that goes on as well. And... We need to check ourselves on the filth. Is there any filth inside of you? Anything nasty, dirty, grimy? Are there any spiritual rodents? Spiritual roaches? Spiritual bed bugs? Spiritual bed thugs? Is there anything inside of you that you can honestly say would receive a spiritual code violation. Mm, mm, mm. That if the health inspector were to visit your home spiritually, Would you be given a citation? Would the home be considered unlivable? Mm. Because of the filth? Is where you are right now unlivable because of the spiritual filth? What does your home look like on the inside? Are there any violations? What needs to be fixed? What's not running right? What's dysfunctioning? Is there any type of mold in your life? <clears throat> Is there something growing in your life that's making you sick spiritually? Are you having trouble breathing? Not getting enough air? Is it hot where you are? Are you waiting for a breeze to blow by? Has the heat been turned up in the summertime for you when it should be cool? 
Are you sweating spiritually? You got a spiritual rash from the heat? Where are you spiritually? <clears throat> are you a landlord? Do you own an apartment complex? Apartment complexes? Do you check on your tenants? Do you make sure everything is up to par? Do you check the service request yourself? Are you a slumlord? Are you just in it for the profit and not for the people? Where's the money going? Why is the spirit of fear being used to police this contract? Is this money that I'm paying even worth it? Creating and living in filth. Filth. <clears throat> what you eat, what you watch, what you intake, what your, what your family tradition is, can all be considered to be filthy. Your attitude, filthy. The way you see life, filthy. Is there some stuff in your life that needs to be picked up and thrown away? Is it just piling up and you see it, but you're ignoring it? It just keeps piling up, though, keeps piling up, though, keeps piling up, but you just keep ignoring it? Are you allowing people to consider you to be the community garbage can are people coming into your life and opening up the trash bag and throwing their trash in your life mm. in your life are they doing that are you a human trash compactor are you full of everybody else's filth Do you know somebody in the physical who has a dirty ass apartment and you just don't understand what's going on? Have you ever been into somebody's house and be like, oh my gosh, make you just want to clean even though your house is clean. You just go home just, just to clean again, just, just to make sure it ain't you. So for those of you who have a nasty apartment, that's why they couldn't stay. That's why they had somewhere to go, even though they didn't. That's why they faked the phone call. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That's why they didn't sit down. Mm-mm, they didn't sit in all day, even though they haven't. Mm-hmm, that's why. And I don't understand how y'all create babies in these environments. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to leave it at that. Stop raising your children in filth. Demon time is dangerous, and there are dangers when you create and live in filth. It's time for you to get your spiritual hazmat suit on and get to cleaning and clearing. It's time to learn what your rights are as a tenant and stop letting them be violated. It's time to keep these buildings up to cold. It's time to put ourselves in a position to where if we need to get out of a situation, we have the finances to do it right then, right there. That we don't have to stay in the peril. That we don't have to live in the danger. That we don't have to stay in the nightmare because we have the funds to deal 
with the situation right when it happens. Mm. Before you sign that lease, before you go and say, oh, I want to live over there. They look nice. Some apartments look nice, girl. They look nice. Before you do all that, you better go online and do your due diligence about this place. And you better go online and you better join the Tenants Association, the Tenants Union. You better go online and find out what your rights are as a tenant in that particular state, in that particular county. You better understand the powers that be when it comes to living in an apartment complex, who your constituents are. I'm telling you. The Most High God has not given us the spirit of fear. So therefore, <clears throat> there's no reason why we should allow ourselves to be violated and end up in a consistent nightmare. As a tenant, the time has been well spent. You've been a wonderful listening audience. I thank you for downloading. I thank you for supporting. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can do, the, do that at dollar sign. S I S T A S P E A K 76. Or you can donate to PayPal at the Sister Speak Show. I appreciate you. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Blessed be the name of the Most High God and His Son, Jesus Christ, Yahawashai. The devil's already defeated. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, for in due season they shall be cut down like the withered herb. My people, they perish for lack of knowledge. Don't let that be you. Rest well, and I'll talk to you in just a little bit. I love conversing with you. Take care. And keep standing on the front line. Warriors mount up. <laughs> the devil is already defeated.